Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to Let's Play The Darkness Within 2, The Dark Lineage. I'm Kemchak Fisco, and come join me for a horror adventure. Okay, actually, before we read that, I found something outside after I paused the video. Of course, it involves crossing this field of doom. Let's uh, try that again, shall we? <laughs> With a little less failure. Alright, sprint is on. <gasps> I can't see anything. It's too dark. Oh, that's why. I was like, I, I could have sworn the book was there. Excuse me? Okay. Okay, creepy wolves, you can stop now. Owner Carl Paleo Paleo? Wellsmith Daily. Journalist writer. All the clues I've gathered for three months about the notorious cult children of Dis Oh right, that was the cult from the first game. Have led me to this old depressing town called Ark Hammond. I'm sure I will find what I expect to find here. That's an odd sentence. His town has really suffered. I think it's supposed to be this. I think that's a typo. This town has a really suffocating atmosphere with all those narrow streets, old buildings, and some very strange statues and carvings spread near and far. Quiet Wolf. I've been here for six days now, and I've never seen the sun shining brightly even once. I know it's autumn now, but there's something strange here. Even the morning hours are darker than they should be. This is just the place where dark and light don't seem to differ much. I bet psychological problems and suicide rates are pretty high. Ark Hammond is a small but very old town, with a surprising number of blood-chilling tales of witchery and sorcery about its history, told about its history. When you leave the town center and the peculiar howling wolf statue to delve into the into the streets, into the atmosphere, that's not even the word, you feel like you're going like you're going back in time. As you proceed, the building gets older and older until you at last until at last you reach the, the border of the oldest part of all. Strangely, I've learned that this section is under quarantine and no one is allowed to enter. There are a few police officers around, but they won't tell me anything ab around about the quarantine. Ugh, can't read. The situation seems curious to me, as there aren't nearly enough precautions normally taken in such crises. In the sections I could visit, most of the houses are damaged and empty, as are the streets. Quiet Wolfie. Some of the houses are still inhabited, but even those are in such poor condition. That sounds like the wolf, like, right over to my right. Some of the houses are, inha are still inhabited, but are some of the ho I hate it when it sounds like somebody's walking near me. Some of the houses are still inhabited, but even those are in such poor condition that it seems like it might they might break down any minute. I know the deserted houses hide secrets in the olden times when sorcery prevailed here, and I feel unseen eyes looking down on me from the glassless windows when I walk through that area of... town. I settled in an old inn named Camp Forwood, and immediately started my research, because I don't want to stay here long. The townsfolk seem rather unusual. I've seen personally that they can be hostile to strangers, just as I was warned about beforehand. But you can always find someone to talk to if you offer the right incentive. I've managed to find a drunk named Joseph. I mustn't forget to learn his surname. With the help of a bottle I bought, I wonder if that's the guy we saw on the bench at the train station. Even though he is not a reliable source, some aspects of what he told me do fit the information I've gathered already. I've learned that the history of this town has always been mixed with terror. Children abduction, child abductions, strange rites done at even stranger places, Unidentified shadows wandering through the narrow streets in the dead of night, undetectable voices from the sewers below, and a cult whose origin dates much further back than the town itself. Stop that. It has many names, but they call themselves the Children of Dis. In all these myths and stories, there are subtle clues that suggest the area... Stop that, Woofie. There are subtle clues... Woofie, stop. There are subtle clues that suggest the area including the town and nearby forest is the cradle of the cult. Some believe that certain places, especially in the woods, the underground is a honeycomb of tunnels and passages that lead to even deeper 
antediluvian underground city. On the surface, there are places supposedly connected to these underground tunnels and passages, and the cult is trying to possess those places. These places. There is a shack out in the forest, and I believe the building is one of them. I will go in search of it in a few days, but I must gather more information first. There are some people who claim to see light in the windows of the shack, and I've heard that a and I've heard of a quiet group of people doing something unholy there. One anecdote in particular stands out. A middle-aged woodcutter returning, from, returning one afternoon from work swears he heard a very loud buzzing sound accompanied by human screams coming out. He says at the time he believed the sounds were coming from underground, but he couldn't find any opening that might lead to it, so he presumed what he heard was just his imagination. It's probably the, the insects in the building we were just reading about. Other woodcutters have said that when the wind is blowing away from the shack, it carries an odor smelling like some kind of incense that has a numbing effect on the person who inhales it. I asked a few townspeople if they know anything about this group and learned that they live in the oldest part of town, in houses no one else would want to live in. They rent from places there, some of which, some of which don't even have electricity. Three or four of them, nobody exactly knows their number. Come to the town center at regular intervals and get something from the train station that the train has delivered. They sometimes have a drink at the inn while they're here. Nobody tries to speak to them because everybody in town hates or fears them. One of the locals told me that a particular visitor was a fake looking, short, coal black beard who seemed superior to the others. Visits the pharmacy every time he's here. I wonder if that's... Uh... Loath. He leaves with big boxes full of strange chemicals he's ordered earlier. I'm sure there must be some kind of laboratory in that shack. I've seen the so-called laboratories before and know that... I know what disgusting things take place there. I must be extra cautious when I visit. I wonder who this man is. If he has control of the others, I should be cautious of him. Man with a fake beard. Alright, I think on this page... An old building in the forest glade could be important. I should go have a look. Isn't that the building we're at? The cult that Ivar... Ivor, that was his name. Ivor Bergen. And the others in his, he met in his cabin. I know that they are very dangerous and have a lot of followers around the world who are doing strange research for the cult. Some of the letters I've read in the cabin offer clear evidence of this. Huh. Wait, what about the buzzing sound? And holy... Very loud buzzing sound. What could the source of these sounds be? This reminds me of the story I once heard about some creatures called hill creatures that imitate human speech with their frighteningly buzzing sounds. Oh, we already know what they are because we went to the building first. But yeah, okay, so we got that. I'm going to save the game because I don't want to fall through the bloody world. Like that. I wonder if I could teleport back here so I don't have to lose the progress we just got. Take me into the old building, please. Good. We could teleport if we fall through the world. I didn't know that. Okay. So let's go back to... Game. I... Nope. Once we fall through the world, we keep falling through the world. Well, holy crap. That's buggy as hell. Alright, I'll be right back. I gotta go redo all this shit again and try to get back to this book. Alright, so we're back. Before we read this book, I actually want to go back to looking around if I can. I... Yeah, I never looked at this, and... I want to see if we could do something with the, uh... The book. This suits in the locker. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's... Never mind. We already read that. It was the pieces of paper I wanted to look at. There's some torn papers here. Oh, there's going to be a jigsaw. This thing's going to be a mess. Okay, that goes on the top. That's the bottom left corner. That goes on the bottom. 
This goes on the bottom, that goes on the side. I guess that connects to this. That connects to... No, not even close. This goes there, that's the middle piece, and then this one goes over here. Can I, like... Can I do something with this? Huh. Um... Ooh, tape! Pieces will fall apart. I can't carry them around this way. Oh, okay, yeah. Tape. Now I can pick up the entire paper. Cool. Paper I fit together containing its pieces. It has strange drawings on it. Okay, so we got that. Is this something we could... No. Okay. So we got whatever that is. We've read that book. Uh... We need the key to get into the dresser over here, and we've got the long-ass book to read. There's a heavy smell here. That's kind of why I was leery to go into that room until we'd had a chance to uh, read the book. This is going to be a long book. 10 9 20, 11. so this is tale of the last year. There's something strange down below. The sounds, they haunt me day and night. Everything started when the, after these hellish insects came. They killed eight of our brothers to this point, We've thrown their bodies into the smoking pit, but I know this is wrong. Try to insist that we should bury them properly. But Professor Jacob said this way is also beneficial to us. I didn't understand what he said. Sometimes he's a real monster. Okay, that sentence didn't sound right, so I'm going to read it the way I think it should say. I didn't understand what he meant. Sometimes he's a real monster. I still see them in my dreams. Their faces, eaten faces. They beg me to save them from their immeasurable pain. They are still there waiting down below. Inside the ageless darkness of that pit. What madness not to bury them. Two months later in December. We were not told about the bites or the anger of the insects. They seem like ordinary bugs, but they aren't. In their original habitats, they lived their whole lives in the deepest part of the caves, far from the reach of sunlight. So they are blind. They are also strong and vicious. If you get bitten too often at once, you will lose your mind for days, maybe weeks, if you are allergic to their venom. Most of us were bitten by them, but who knows how many times. I cannot be sure if I'm even being bitten anymore. Delusion or reality? They're no different for me now after all the things I've heard. They came here from some place in Africa. Nobody knows about their existence except us. Not even the top entomologists. Mr. Kerwin, that inhuman thing, he knew about them. He knows many things unknown to anyone else, at least any modern man. So that would be loath. Loath is Mr. Kerwin, we know that. Every now and then the insects attack us. At first we didn't know the reason for their aggression, but later Professor Jacob found out that they attack if you pose a threat to their nests. You cannot hide from them. They always know where and even who you are. How would they know who you are? That, okay. It seems they can differentiate us with ease. Oh, between different humans, you mean. Professor Jacob said they may even be able to see, just not the same way we do. Maybe they have heat sensors or some other extrasensory organs we can't comprehend with our science. Who knows? Professor Jacob seems troubled about them. It's obvious that even he didn't expect this. 14, 9, 20... Oh no, the dates are the other... Oh, my bad. The dates are the other way around. So it was 9, 10, then 9, 12. So it's two days later, not two months later. Because these are international dates, not American dates. My bad. Okay, so this is two days past that. I hear the sounds clearer now, although I still don't know who or what makes them, or where they come from exactly. At first they sounded like harmless natural noises, but now I know they're conscious, not just random sounds. They come in continuously repeated, long and short bursts. But I still can't tell just anyone. If they learn, I'll take my place among my friends and sit the pit. They don't let anybody hinder the experiments. But there is someone, a quiet and sober man named Ashmohed? Ashmohed? I'm not sure how to say that name. He seems troubled. I think he hears what I hear. I will try to speak with him. Two days later. Yesterday, Murrows got attacked. He somehow managed to escape the flocks of angry insects and locked himself into one of the rooms. His horrible screams are still echoing inside my head. I wanted to save him. I tried to get him out, but Professor Jacob wouldn't let me. Three people dragged me out, and everyone was evacuated immediately. There is no doubt we left him to die down there. 
Professor Jacob said there was no chance for him, and he should be dead by now. This is insane. What are we doing with these things? They are much too dangerous. We cannot control them. Even two and a half hours later, we could still hear the humming of angry insects. Professor Jacob said we should take a break and send everyone away. Only as Moed, Henbuck, and I stayed as guards, as we always do on Fridays. We normally guard the place in turns. One of us is always awake while the other two sleep, and last night was no exception. Only Ashbahead is awake, and in the dead of night we were awakened by his crazy screams. He said he heard Murrows crying and begging for us to help him. After a short while, after a short while, I heard Murrows too, but Henbach couldn't hear a thing. He said our imaginations were running loose and went back to sleep, but Murrow really was crying down there. Ashbahead and I could clearly hear him. We tried to go down, but realized the handle was gone. Professor Jacob must have taken it with him. I don't know why, but after a while I felt so sleepy. I couldn't resist, and soon fell into a sleep full of nightmares. My personal thanks to each and every one of you for tuning in. You all are awesome viewers. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. It means a lot to me, and I do hope you enjoy it. You all take care of yourselves. If you want to see more of me, keep up the video list, or stay tuned for more. Feel free to leave a comment below, and please remember to take that like button if you enjoyed the video. In the meantime, fare thee well, everyone.